Today we're going to be talking about how to get pop on a skateboard. And no, I don't mean getting your dad to ride a board, but rather we're going to be talking about this little magic moment here where your board hits the ground and then comes flying upward. So what exactly does it mean to have good pop? Well really, it's just understanding a few basic principles about how to properly kick your board downward and then coordinating that with a jump and some good timing. So we've all seen or done tricks with maybe very little pop or even no pop at all. So how do we turn things around to get some good height out of our tricks? Well, let's check in with my old friend Physics for a very brief and basic lesson. So when you stomp down on the tail of a skateboard, this is gonna cause it to shoot downward and hit the ground and then fly up into the air. But already, this is where some of the problems start to arise with newer skaters, and it all stems from the back foot. So when you do stomp down on the tail, if your back foot doesn't move out of the way, then the board is just gonna be pinned underneath and stuck on the ground. And this is the main reason why newer skaters have such a hard time getting the board off the ground when they're trying to learn an ollie. And I think some of this can be blamed on tutorials online that say you have to stomp the tail down and then jump and slide your front foot forward. Because really the timing is a little bit more complicated than just doing three steps in a row. Because the three different parts kind of overlap each other and happen at the same time. So if you're anything like me, then you fall a lot when you're learning new tricks. So it's pretty nice to have a wallet that isn't going to leave me wondering if I've cracked all my credit cards in half. And Dango's A10 Adapt Wallets are the perfect solution for this. They're super durable and lightweight and can definitely take a beating. And on top of that, they have a built-in rail system that lets you easily swap out different attachments depending on your needs. The main wallet can hold four cards and has an opening on the back so you can easily have something like your ID ready to show. And with the optional accessories, you can hold additional cards and customize it to your liking. I personally like the little single pocket attachment because I usually don't carry too much with me anyway. But really, there's a ton of different ones that you can swap out, which is pretty dang cool. Getting your cards in and out is really convenient and easy, and they're all packed behind an RFID blocking plate. So yeah, if you're sick of falling on your wallet and breaking your zoo pass in half, and then having them not let you in to see the wallabies, then I'd highly recommend these A10 wallets from Dango. So get rid of that floppy old wallet, and follow the link in the description to get 10% off of your order. So the main thing here to figure out how to get good pop is understanding that your back foot, once it presses down on the tail, should not go all the way down to the ground, but rather it should be lifting up before the tail even hits the ground. You can see here how when I press down with my back foot, I push the tail downward, but I don't actually keep my foot on the tail, but rather I'm lifting it up as I jump. And so like I showed before, when the foot was staying on top of the tail and trapping it on the ground, this way it allows the board to come up after it hits the ground. So one of the first things I'd say to start improving things is instead of just taking your back foot and slamming it straight down, you have to sort of start understanding and practicing pushing down with your toes, but not pushing all the way down to the ground. But rather you're just pushing the board down towards the ground and away from your back foot as you jump off. So I'd say go and practice just this motion with your back foot of just snapping the tail downward, but making sure that once you've given it that push downward, you're not keeping your back foot on top of the tail and it's lifting upward. After that, you can start practicing by actually doing the ollie motion. And at this point, it's completely fine to only focus on that back foot, even if you're landing completely back heavy. The main thing here is you wanna be able to get your back wheels up off the ground by giving the board that pop and jump motion. So if you've gotten to this point where you can do rocket ollies, but your back wheels are getting up off the ground, then you're on the right track and it's time to move on to the other side of things. So as I mentioned earlier, if you just stomp on the tail of the board, it's gonna come flying upward into the air. And so this is where your front foot comes into play. And it basically keeps the board under control and prevents it from flipping or doing anything crazy. While at the same time, shifting the board's weight from the back to the front, and that lifts up the tail. So it may sound counterintuitive, but generally the initial pop that you get off the tail isn't necessarily too high. Now it does get you a little bit up into the air, but really it's the front foot that levels the board out and this gives you most of your height. So if we watch this, we can see that my initial pop really isn't too high. It's only a few inches, but it's here where we get back into the physics thing. And we see that pushing forward and down on the nose of the board is going to cause the tail to do the opposite and lift up into the air even further. And so you can see how getting pop is really a multifaceted thing where it consists of popping off the ground initially with your tail, but then getting the maximum height out of it by teetering your board forward and shifting your weight towards the nose. 
So if you had that initial step of just doing the rocketed ollies, but with some pop, you can then start this second step by shifting your weight forward in the air. And like I said before, it's really all about timing and it's going to be hard at first until you figure out the right way of doing things. But I think that as long as you understand the underlying concepts, then you should be able to get it with enough practice. And now really quick, I wanna mention that I've only focused on ollies so far in this video, but the concept of popping down the board with your back foot and not having it pinned underneath really applies to any trick where you need pop. And then the other concept of sliding your foot out to get the board higher up doesn't necessarily apply to every single trick. But for things like kick flips and heel flips, even though your foot ends up coming off the front of the board, it's still the same concept of leveling the back out to get it higher off the ground. And now I briefly want to go over a few things that can affect your pop and can either make it easier or harder to get higher. So if you have an old board that's all worn down with a razor tail, this can definitely make it harder to get a higher pop. And then a few other factors with your board, including if you're using the nose or the tail, if you have high or low trucks, or if your board is really heavy, these can also affect the height of your pop. And then finally, your height in general, I think, can affect things. If you have shorter legs, then it might be a little harder to pop higher, which is why you don't see little kids doing super high ollies. But just like with other things in skateboarding, the more you practice and the better your timing gets and your comfort, then little by little, your ability to pop should get better and you should be able to get higher tricks. So just remember to start small and work your way up. Practice a few times by popping the tail down with just your back foot and making sure that you're not pinning the tail down against the ground. And then step on with both feet and start practicing some rocketed ollies, just practicing getting the tail off the ground. And once you have that down, you can start including your front foot more by sliding it towards the nose as you jump off your back foot and making sure that you're jumping forward towards your nose and shifting your weight. And even if your ollies are only an inch or two off the ground, as long as you have an understanding of these fundamental concepts, if you just do things over and over again, eventually you'll be able to get higher and higher. So this is just my little thoughts on how to get pop on a skateboard and really what pop is. And hopefully it made some sense and you can put it to use. Really at the end of the day, getting good pop is mainly about timing. So if you just go out there and practice and try it again and again and again, then hopefully you'll get better and you can pop higher. As always, I'd like to thank my wonderful Patreon supporters for being so lovely. And I'd like to thank you for watching and you can like and subscribe if you want.